Hello everyone. So this is the next chapter after laws of motion or after Newton's laws, which is work energy power. So what is the significance of having this chapter just after laws of motion? Uh, we saw a couple of problems in laws of motion. A few of them were easy to tackle using those three laws of Newton. A few of them which I did not discuss, but there are some problems which are difficult if you you know adopt the approach of Newton's laws, especially the problems wherein the forces that are involved are of variable nature. The problems are a little bit difficult to tackle using Newton's laws. But those problems are simplified if you start looking them from the perspective of work, energy and power. Okay, so this chapter will particularly involve a theorem called as work energy theorem which you will be seeing um, you know, by the end of this lecture. So that theorem will simplify a lot of problems for you. So let us first, you know, first thing first, let us first look at what exactly is this terminology work. Okay, so the work terminology from the physics point of view has a little bit different meaning from what, you know, in general, a layman would define work as. If we are holding just a heavy weight in our hand for say one hour or so, as long as one hour, we will say that, you know, I got so much exhausted and I have done so much of work. But in physics sense, that would not be work at all. Because work in physics is defined as, it is defined as a product of force and displacement. So what is necessary for work to happen? We need to apply some force on an object and the point at which we apply a force on the object should move certain distance. Now in the previous example that I gave you, we are holding certain object, let us say a dumbbell that you use in a gym. Let us say you are holding it for one hour in your hand. And if I ask you or if you ask me how much is the work that I have done in last one hour, I'll say from the physics point of view, the work is zero because even if you are applying a force, there is no displacement that has happened because you are just holding it in your hand or probably you are holding it over your head. But for all that time, you are not causing any displacement, any the change in the position of that object. And that is why there, from physics point of view, there is no work done. So what is the significance of this work? You apply certain force on an object and that object is moved from one position to another position. That means you must have spent some energy in doing this thing, right? So you moved the object from one location to another location. How much is the force that was necessary to move this object? And using that force, how much could you move the object? These two, both the things are very much important in knowing what has happened with the object. How much has it moved and how much is the force that is necessary to move it? Let us say there is a very heavy object. Let us say there is a cupboard that you want to move from one location in your room to another location. Now the cupboard is very heavy and we know that if you start you know, sliding it over the floor, there is a frictional force that will be opposing its motion. So if you start pushing it, you will be needing a huge force to push it over the floor and to move it from one location to another location. If I ask you, instead of moving a cupboard, if you have a very small table there in your room and if I ask you to move it from the same location to the same location as you move the cupboard, you will need a lesser force. So in which of the two cases, moving cupboard or moving a very small cupboard or moving a large um, uh, you know, uh, or rather moving a small table or moving a large cupboard in your room. In which of the two cases will you get tired more? You will obviously get tired while moving the heavier object, which is the cupboard in this case. While, while as moving table, you will get very less tired. So what is more important? How much is the force that you need to apply to move the things is important. Now take the same cupboard, same heavy cupboard. But instead of moving by say, you know, one location in the room to other location in the room, you move it from one location to another location in somebody else's room. Okay. Now the displacement is very large. The force that you apply is same because you are moving the same cupboard over the same floor. But now you are moving it by a larger distance, maybe twice as distance as you moved in the previous case. Then you will get tired more. So how much you move it is also important. 
so the total work that you do basically total energy that you have to put in the total efforts that you put in the amount with which you get exhausted all these things they depend on the force that you need to apply and the displacement that you cause and that is why the product of the two is defined as work that you do on things now this is all about the work now if i do work on an object its speed changes right uh, uh, thing that you can observe in daily life you apply a force onto something its speed changes from zero to you know some speed it goes on increasing why does it happen because when we do work we apply a force when we apply a force we must be giving an acceleration to the object because we know from newton's laws f is equal to ma if we apply a force we give an acceleration we give an acceleration we cause a change in the speed and that is why a force must result into change in the speed okay so let us say that if i apply a force f on this particular object and you know it causes a displacement x of that object by the time it moves to the location number 2 it must have acquired certain speed so let us say it started from v is equal to 0 and now it has some v is equal to v dash so its speed changed from 0 to v dash okay when when you did work f on that object now we have to see what is the interrelationship between this f and this v dash you know but before that let us see more about this work the work is defined as a product of force and displacement so let us say take a weird case where in you know while moving this object if i want to know you know there is a friend who is really not doing any work while you know moving this object how, how is he applying the force let us say your friend is very mischievous and when you are moving this object he starts applying a force on to this object in a perpendicular direction so basically what he is doing is he is causing nuisance he is pressing the object from the top so that the normal reaction on this object will increase and that will increase the frictional force and you know you will find it hard to move this object then the friend will say i applied so much force you know just look at how much work did i do then you will say no boss you did not do any work because you are applying a force perpendicular to the direction of the motion so you really you really didn't cause any motion in fact you made the things worse for me what you did was you applied a force perpendicular to the motion that increased the friction because friction is new times normal reaction as we saw in the previous chapter so in fact i had to apply more force i let us let us give another example before you know moving with work and you know velocity and interrelationship between them i'll give you another example you know this is the earth over which you know there is this moon which is moving around the earth now when the moon moves around the earth how is the force applied by the earth onto the moon it is towards the center of the earth what is the direction in which the moon is moving it is this direction right and they are perpendicular to each other so the moon's displacement is perpendicular to the force applied by earth on the moon in all such cases where the displacement is perpendicular to the force applied the things really don't do any any kind of work take our previous example in this example also there was gravity present right mg which was the pull by the earth onto this box how much is the work that the gravity or the earth was doing when this box moved from this location to this location how much is the earth, how much is the work that the gravity was doing it was zero right gravity was not helping you at all gravity would help you only in the case you are putting the box on an inclined plane then the box will probably slide on its own it all depends on how much is the friction and what is the inclination angle so all those things considered there is a probability that the block will slide down why does it slide down even without touching it the gravity is helping it but in case of an in case of a horizontal plane the gravity is not helping it at all so what is happening there though there is a force there is a force by gravity there is a displacement that is happening but i am saying that gravity is not doing any work but work was defined as a product of force and displacement then why am i you know saying that gravity is not doing any work because the angle between them is 90 degree that means work has something to do with the angle as well and that is why we have to look into the real formula for work this is just a definition which says that 
it is a product of the force and displacement there is a part of this definition which is left out usually and that part is very much important when force acts along the displacement okay so if the force is acting along the displacement then you have to take a product of the two what is the case when the force is neither acting along the displacement but nor is it perpendicular to the displacement it is at an angle so let us say you have this object and you are lifting it in this fashion at an angle theta then you know part of this force is you know trying to move the object try try lifting a table in your room by applying you know try moving the table in horizontal direction by applying a force which is at an angle to it the table will still come forward but there is a tendency of getting it lifted as well why is this happening just split your force your force has a vertical component as well as a horizontal component now horizontal component of the force is definitely doing the work but what is vertical component doing it is not doing anything it is just trying to lift the table up so it is not very much useful for doing the work in horizontal direction so all these things considered how do we really you know put an put this thing into an equation a mathematical equation which represents work so work is defined as f dot s so what is this dot what does this dot stand for it's not a usual multiplication that you do between two things because we know that force is not really a scalar it's really a vector right whereas displacement is also a vector if you remember from the basics displacement is a vector force is also a vector and when a dot appears between two vectors it is something called as dot product okay and how do we define this dot dot product dot product is defined as f dot s is defined as magnitude of f you know how to find the magnitude of the force right and then magnitude of s and then cos of angle between f and s so in the previous case when i was trying to move this box over the floor what did i say only the horizontal component of the box is causing the displacement the vertical component f y is not really causing anything what does it mean i should only consider the horizontal component while calculating the work that means work in this particular case should be equal to horizontal component of f which is fx times displacement which is equal to how much is fx we know we have seen the resolution of force so this angle theta it will be f cos theta into displacement which turns out to be the same formula right where f is magnitude of f bar s is magnitude of s bar and there is a cos theta which is the angle between f and s and that is why there is a shorter way of representing it and that is through dot product why is this dot product necessary because the things won't be as simple as they are when they are in one dimension if you have things in two dimensions the dot product seems to be very very helpful let us say your f bar is one vector which is represented by f1 i cap plus f2 j cap if you remember the vectors that i had introduced in the chapter of 2d motion so this is how we represented vectors a1 i cap plus a2 j cap plus a3 k cap so we have a vector force which is acting in two dimensions so this is x y plane and force acting is in this way so basically it has fx i cap plus fy j cap two components to it and in such case we have a displacement which is probably s1 i cap plus s2 j cap so displacement is also in two dimensions now how do you find this product for this the dot product comes to our help how do i do it it is magnitude of f bar how do we find the magnitude of such a vector we know that magnitude of f bar in this case would be square root of f1 square plus f2 square just you know recall the basics of vectors that i had introduced magnitude of s bar would be square root of s1 square plus s2 square and then cos of angle between these two now how do you find the angle between these two vectors now there is a trick work done is equal to f dot s this is not the only formula to it 
there is another formula for finding a dot product and now i am going to reveal that formula to you so dot product in general is defined as f bar dot s bar or dot product of any two vectors let us say a bar dot b bar c bar dot d bar any two vectors when we take a dot product it is equal to now what is f bar it is f1 i cap plus f2 j cap what is s bar it is s1 i cap plus s2 j cap if you want to take a dot product of these two what you get is f1 s1 plus f2 s2 that's it so just take the i cap i cap take the uh, you know suffixes that are there, there with them multiply them as scalars and then f2 s2 multiply them add them together this is the value of f bar dot s bar now if you equate this value with magnitude of f bar magnitude of s bar cos of theta we know what is magnitude of f bar put it here because we already know what are f1 and f2 f bar will be represented in a form of numbers right so it will be 2 i cap plus 3 j cap this could be 1 i cap plus 2 j cap that means you know f1 f2 s1 s2 all these four values you know put these values in here you get this as a single number then on this side what do you have magnitude of f bar which is this you know f1 and f2 both has numbers find this as a single number you know s1 and s2 find this as a single number so you know left hand side out of right hand side you know these two things and cos theta is the only thing that you don't know so this way you can find the angle between f bar and s bar now once you know the angle just put it here you get your total work done that is one formula so finding f bar s bar and cos theta putting it in here and finding the work done that is one way of doing it the second way of doing it is just do f1 s1 plus f2 s2 you get your work done so these are the two ways of finding work done when you have two dimensional or three dimensional vectors but if you have the things only happening in 1d the things are very very simple you can just take f magnitude of f magnitude of s and cos of angle between them so this is all about finding the work done now let us go back to the thing that i was discussing so if you are moving an object over the plane and if you are applying a force f to it the object let us say moves by a distance x and its speed increases from 0 to let us say final speed v is equal to vf or v dash whatever you want to call it so its speed increases from initial speed 0 or you can even call it vi to vf so initial speed vi to final speed vf that is how the speed of the object changes when you apply a force f onto it now how do i relate this force with this vf for this you need to know the mass of the object let us say that it is m one way of doing it is very very simple go back to your laws of motion find out the acceleration that is on this acting on this box why why is there an acceleration because you are applying the force how much is the force that you are applying it is f divided by mass what is the acceleration f upon m so you got your acceleration now how is acceleration defined it is vf minus vi divided by delta t so you know your acceleration you want to find your vf you know your vi delta t is another thing that you need to find so basically go for equations of kinematics is what i would suggest you have a displacement x taking place so you know your uh, displacement you know your initial velocity and you know your acceleration so these are the three things that you know what you want to find is vf apply the equations of kinematics you find your vf but that is a longer way of looking at it and you know that would just tell you the answer for this particular case but we, what we want to really have is a generalized relationship between the force and the velocity or in fact between the work and the velocity we want to have a generalized relationship so what we will do is we will write a generalized formula and we will try to get a generalized relationship do you remember this formula dv by dt is equal to acceleration or what you probably might be remembering is limit as delta time tends to zero delta v by delta t is equal to acceleration you might be remembering any one of these two for me uh, where did we do it in very basics i defined acceleration as rate of change of velocity 
and this in fact is an instantaneous acceleration so how did i define it as instantaneous acceleration is when you reduce the time to very 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 small amount what is the change in the velocity that is taking place over that time is your acceleration so basically this turns out to be dv by dt we covered this when we looked into integration and derivative okay so if i have this formula i'll do a little bit of manipulation in here what, how do i do it acceleration can i not write it as instead of dv by dt let me put dx here and i'll also multiply by dx so in, essentially i'm not doing anything i just divided by dx and multiplied by dx and left is dt i'll put it as is so what did i do here dv by dt is still there i just multiplied and divided by dx but what did it give me there's something that is familiar in here dx by dt what is it it's velocity like dv by dt is acceleration dx by dt is velocity so what do i get here it's velocity times dv by dx so v dv by dx gives me acceleration okay now what i will do is this dx i'll put it on the other side and you know i'll switch the sides as well so that gives me v dv is equal to a dx right what did i do dx I, i have put it on the other side and also switch the sides so v dv is equal to a dx or if i multiply both sides by mass of the object that is being moved because what are we talking about here we are talking about an acceleration we are talking about velocity we are talking about certain time in which all this is happening so acceleration of what the thing that is moving velocity of what change in the velocity of what the thing that is moving and that particular thing which is moving and causing a change in its velocity basically the box that we are discussing it must be having some mass so i just multiplied on both sides by the mass of it now what does this look like does it look familiar mass times acceleration which is force times dx is still left now f times dx what is dx it is the change in the position a very small change in the position okay whereas f is force now small change in the position what do we call it in general change in the position is displacement a small change in the position would mean small displacement right so what do i have now i have force times a small change in the position which is force times a small displacement is equal to mv dv right so this is what i have now force times small displacement how is work defined force times displacement is my work right now just write small before this force times small displacement will give me small work right force times displacement is work force times small displacement is small work that is happening because you are applying a force but you are causing very teeny tiny displacement then that would give me a teeny tiny work so force times ds is my small work is what i'm what i'm looking at now there are two cases one case we will discuss now the other case we will leave it for later so one case is when force is constant so you are moving the object but the force that you are applying is constant which you know many a times happens you are trying to move a cupboard in a room you apply constant force onto it you want to move a box you apply constant force onto it so wherever you apply constant force it would result into constant acceleration so all the cases that we discussed in our newton's law if you remember i had told you that we are restricting ourselves to constant acceleration cases and when you have constant acceleration you have a constant force so all the cases that newton's laws could cover work energy can also cover i'll tell you how but there is another variation where you have variable forces coming in picture so basically the force varies as the object moves when does it happen there are many cases when this kind of things happen but we will keep all those cases for later as of now since we are you know just scratching the surface of work energy i'm not going to consider this what i am going to consider is force is constant we will consider this particular equation work energy equation for all those cases where forces are constant over the entire motion 
so any any motion that you can think of usually what you will think of is about the constant force cases only because i'm i have not yet introduced where you know the cases where the force varies with time or varies with space varies with displacement so if you can think of any example the box is being moved from one location to other location you know uh, an object that is falling from certain distance onto ground all these things of different example that you can think of all these involve constant forces so constant force times displacement gives me mv dv which is small change in the velocity now i will do something with this which is called as integrity i had introduced this while discussing about integration and derivative so on both sides what i'm doing is integrating what do i what what do i mean by integration when i introduced integration i introduced it as a summation of small small things so what is one small thing that we have in here which is small work done f times ds what i'm going to do is i'm going to sum up all small small work done what will it give me it will give me the total work done if i sum up all small 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 work done it will give me how much is the total work done that i have done so what what does it what does left hand side stand for it tells me what is work done total by whom by all the forces that are applied right so all the external forces that are applied because we know that internal forces can't really do anything we have already discussed this in newton's laws if you you know start pushing the car from within the car it won't move at all if you want to move it you go outside the car and start pushing it from behind just by pushing the car by sitting inside the car and pressing against the windshield it's really silly thing to do so work done total because of all external forces that are acting on the body what are the external forces that may act on the body friction something that is external onto the body so the plane on which the object is standing that is that is applying a friction so plane is external to the object friction comes so friction gets covered under f gravity because of earth onto the object gets covered in this springs probably that are applying force onto the object get gets covered in this so there are so many forces that get covered a force that you apply onto the object you are external to the object so that gets covered under this so all such external forces and the work done because of all those external forces that is on the left hand side on right hand side what do we have mass of the object which is constant it will come out of integration so what do i have integrate v dv now does it not look like integrate x dx just look for the formula for integrate x dx that we had introduced if you don't remember i'll help you recall m times integrate x dx stands for x square by 2 and that is why integrate v dv would stand for v square by 2 and i get my work total external is equal to m v square by 2 so this is something new that we are getting here m v square by 2 or it's usually popular in this form half m v square is equal to work done total external now we will be discussing about what this is half m v square is something new that we have got okay so what what does it stand for 1 by 2 mv square so i i need not really worry about 1 by 2 right now but what is this m and what is this v square m is the mass of the object v square is the velocity of the object okay now there is one thing that i have forgotten in here when you integrate what you are integrating is on left hand side you have small small work done being summed up so you had an equation like this let me just show it once again so you had dw which is equal to f dx so f dx integrate and you had v dv integrate rather m v dv integrate now you have to put some limits because these things are not varying indefinitely you have some definite limits under which these things are varying so your x varies from 0 to let us say x certain distance it could be s where your velocity it varies from initial velocity to final velocity like we were pushing the box from vi to vf so we forgot to mention those things in here it should be vi to vf or u to v certain limit should be there and when you put limits the integration also you have to put those limits in and that is why what you have is not 1 by 2 mv square but what you really have is 1 by 2 mv square minus 1 by 2 mu square is equal to work done total 
okay so what you have is change between this certain thing we don't know what it is i will give it a name but what you have is half m into v final square minus half m into v initial square that means that certain quantity final minus certain quantity initial so there is basically a change in that certain quantity why am i saying certain quantity because i haven't yet given it a name so let us give it a name first what is that certain quantity it stands for something called as kinetic energy so kinetic energy the formula goes something like this 1 by 2 mv square half mv square what does it stand for an object that is moving object has certain mass and object has a velocity a combined effect of this two we have already seen a terminology called as momentum which is a combined effect of mass and velocity so momentum if you if you try to stop an object that is moving it hits your hand and all these things that i have discussed so basically momentum it represents how much of force that that particular object would exert on your hand if you try to stop it that is what momentum represents what does this kinetic energy represent it tells me if an object is moving with a velocity v what is the energy that is possessed by that object if the object is moving it must be having some energy right how do i make this particular object moving is it moving right now no how do i make it moving i have to push it right that means i have to do some work on the object i will lose my energy if i do work on this object i get exhausted that means whatever food i have eaten that is converted to the energy that i am giving to this object that means i am getting exhausted i am losing energy while moving this object where is that energy going it is going into this object and then this object starts moving that means a moving object possesses energy from where has it acquired that energy it acquired it from me i ate food and i gave that energy of the food to this object if you want to make it moving you have to give it some energy that means every moving object it possesses certain energy and how do you represent that energy as it is called as kinetic energy so write down the definition of kinetic energy energy possessed by a body on account of its motion is called as kinetic energy if the object is having a motion if it is moving on account of that motion the object is said to possess some energy and that energy is termed as kinetic energy now if you have understood what kinetic energy is let us look back at what we have got in here what we have got is work that you do work done total by all the external forces so in this particular example you the force that you are applying was the only external force so work that you are doing that external work stands for kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial so basically change in kinetic energy now you understand where is why are you getting exhausted when you try to move certain things if you move certain thing your energy gets converted into kinetic energy and it goes with that object so the food that you eat it gets converted into energy you know how it gets converted into energy you know the molecules of the food they give out certain energy and there are some chemical processes that are happening inside our stomach and that is how we get our energy now when you get that energy you spend that energy in changing the speed of the object so the object will now carry your energy okay so that is how we have got our equation work done total external is equal to change in the kinetic energy what does this total indicate it, it indicates all the external forces that might be acting on the object probably because of gravity or because of friction or because of spring or because of you or any other external agencies that are to the object it includes all those work done